Endeavour Mining has announced its Q2 results today. Joining us on the line is CEO Sebastian de Montesu. Good morning, Sebastian. Good morning, Rosie. Now, Sebastian, you've announced a solid set of results for Q2 and you've reiterated your full year guidance. Amidst a global pandemic, you must be very pleased with these results. Yeah, and I think it's um, you know largely thanks to the uh, to the great teams we have on site, who, um, in spite of the additional challenges uh, presented by you know COVID nineteen, the team has done uh, an incredible job to keep producing and uh, in particular to continue to find ways to try to improve our business. Uh, we have much to be proud uh, of the team, and uh, they've been quickly reinvented themselves on how to operate and ensure business continuity in a heavily changing uh, environment. And I think that uh, also early on in the in the pandemic, uh, we've been able to put together a, a business continuity plan. And as part of that plan, we made certain modification to our uh, mine plans uh, in order to provide flexibility to our operations, uh, should in particular our COVID-19 response uh, get you know, stricter. And fortunately, that hasn't happened. Uh, and this has positioned us, I think, very well for the uh, second half of the year. So um, overall, we remain uh, on track to achieve our uh, full year uh, production and also all in sustaining cost guidance, uh, which I think is a very good outcome given the, uh, the environment. Um, I would also probably add that our COVID-19 prevention plan has, uh, has proven to be uh, very robust so far. And, uh, and I'm pleased that uh, we've been able to uh, to keep our employees and the communities around our mine site safe. Uh, you know, it's very important for us and it's very important to ensure the continuity of our operations that uh, we keep both employees but also communities, you know, safe from, uh, from uh, COVID-19. Um, we've tried to provide a significant amount of support uh, to both our local communities uh, but also the governments where we operate and we've done that through a mix of different uh, elements like uh, you know financial assistance training medical equipment and supply but as well as microfinance project and this is an important one in order to support people that were losing their income during the uh, the confinement period uh, and also, which uh, you know, people might uh, you know smile, uh, but basically providing e-learning program for students as uh, as schools were were closed. And and I can tell you, in Africa, uh, you know, the uh, the schools are not equipped the same way we can be in uh, in North America or in Europe. Now, the big news the market will be pleased to hear is the announcement regarding a dividend. Talk us through that in a bit more detail. Well, to be frank, I think the uh, you know the bigger news is uh, our expectations of uh, reaching a, a strong net cash position uh, in the near future. Um, this will, I think, further de-risk our business and give us also increased capital allocation optionality. After uh, you know investing close to a billion dollar in the business over the last uh, three four years in uh, in building our our key mines, our two flagship mines, Hunde and Iti, but also investing a lot in exploration. Uh, we've seen uh, a turning point uh, in Q3 last year, uh, where we started for the first time to generate uh, net cash, um, to start generating uh, net cash flow, and uh, and we see that uh, you know this has been now accelerating since to the uh, the quality of the portfolio and and the gold price, uh, and I think it's uh, you know very pleasing uh, to see that uh, you know we should be very quickly. Uh, fully deleverage, uh, which will allow us to uh, start putting in place a, a dividend policy and through that reward the uh, the shareholders that have been supporting us over the last uh, three, four years during this investment period. And, uh, you know, as soon as uh, we get uh, to this uh, net cash uh, position, uh, we'll be, uh, we'll be uh, ready to, uh, you know, to initiate our, our dividend policy. So, Sebastian, why is a dividend so important? Well, you know, I think that uh, being able uh, for a company to pay a dividend means that um, the business is uh, has reached uh, a point uh, where it's robust, stable, and that uh, you know should give confidence uh, in uh, in investors uh, that the company is uh, is well run. And uh, we are at a time where uh, you know more and more generalist funds are looking at uh, our industry. Uh, the best way for them to assess the quality of a business is, uh, you know, to look at the at the balance sheet, the strengths of the balance sheet, and the ability for management teams to, uh, you know, to put in place a, a dividend policy, which is again a way to demonstrate the uh, quality and the robustness of the uh, of the business. So turning now to your acquisition of Semifo, which closed on July first, twenty twenty, how is the integration going? 
Well, I think, uh, you know, Rosie, I think the integration has been, you know, very smooth. Um, it's been uh, down to, you know, planning. Uh, we started that back in March, just after the, uh, the announcement of the transaction. So we already had, uh, you know, four months uh, to, uh, to work and make progress uh, on this. Um, the SEMAFO team and the assets have now been fully integrated into our West African operating model. Um, as you know, our operating model is very focused on putting our operations at the heart of the business and supported uh, in the back by the right technical and, and support function. Um, last week, for example, I went to, uh, to Burkina Faso and I spent time at both Mana and Bungu, the two mine sites that uh, uh, we've acquired from Semafo, uh, to welcome the teams uh, in, the, uh, in the Endeavor family and, uh, and see the integration progress. And I was, I um, must say, very pleased to see everyone now wearing the Endeavor shirt uh, with our values on it, the four Ps, uh, which stands for partners, performers, pioneers, and, and proactive. And, and I could feel on side how people were, you know, very enthusiastic about joining the, the Endeavor family and being part also of this journey of building a leading African gold producer. So it was very, very pleasing to see that. Now, Sebastian, it seems like you timed your M&A correctly. How do you view the M&A space now? Um, well, you know, I think that the, uh, uh, the industry needs to uh, continue to, uh, to consolidate. Um, at the same time, on our side, I have always said that, uh, you know, we don't need to do, uh, to do M&A to continue to grow. Uh, we've been, you know, opportunistic with the, uh, the semaphore transaction, uh, given that uh, it was, uh, you know, an attractive one. Um, we are now seeing, you know, the benefits of, you know, slotting in assets within the uh, West African platform that uh, we've been building over the last uh, the last few years. Um, I think that this platform is is very strong. Uh, you know, over the past decade, uh, you know, we've been, uh, you know, with uh, my, you know, exploration, public affairs, security, some of our GMs, uh, all key people that have been, you know, working with me uh, in this region for close to 15 years. Um, and uh, and this is you know uh, now uh, helping a lot uh, in uh, in building this uh, this platform. Uh, one example is probably when uh, you know going to Burkina Faso last uh, last week. Uh, I probably spent uh, about 36 hours in Ouagadougou, the uh, the capital city, as most of the time was spent on uh, on the mine sites. Uh, but during those uh, you know 36 hours, I was able to meet uh, five ministers, the prime minister, and the president. Uh, which is, you know, uh, I think uh, a good example of the, you know, quality of the relationship that we have with uh, the governments that uh, uh, where we operate. Uh, we are strong partners and uh, we are building a very, uh, I would say, strong and mutually beneficial relationship with those governments. Um, and, you know, using that platform, I've always believed that, you know, slotting assets progressively into this model is probably the best way to create value from, uh, from day one. Uh, we see now uh, this with uh, with the SEMAFO assets, uh, and uh, and you know I'm not I'm not an M&A junkie. You know I've, uh, we've proven that uh, we can you know walk away from the table uh, when we are ne negotiating uh, if if we see that the terms are not attractive enough for our shareholders. And I think we'll continue to have this very disciplined approach towards uh, towards M&A. The good news is that uh, you know we have a strong portfolio of assets and also a strong portfolio of uh, you know exploration and, and projects. So uh, we have internal growth, uh, which means that uh, again we don't need to do M&A, and uh, you know we'll keep looking at it. But uh, you know we'll be very opportunistic and only if it makes sense for uh, you know for us. So looking ahead at the second half of the year, what can investors expect from Endeavour? Well, firstly, uh, I think that uh, you know investor will be pleased to see that uh, we are uh, maintaining our 2020 uh, guidance, um, both despite the COVID-19 and uh, you know on top of the uh, acquisition of uh, of Semafo, uh, which means that we are expecting to produce between 995,000 to a million 95,000 ounces uh, this year, and um, and with all in sustaining costs that should be between uh, around 900 or below 900 all in sustaining costs. Um, and as mentioned earlier, uh, I think that uh, we'll be benefiting in the second half from some of the key actions that, uh, that we took during the, uh, the first and the second quarter. Um, so, for example, we'll be benefiting from uh, a higher grade at uh, Hyundai uh, as we will be starting the uh, carry pump deposit uh, almost two quarters ahead of uh, you know, the original plan that we had thanks to the uh, swift receipt uh, of the uh, the mining permit uh, back in uh, you know end of june 
um, but we will also be expecting to, uh, to restart mining operations at, uh, at Bungu. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, I was there last week, uh, meeting the teams on site to go through all the restart plan, uh, which is looking very good. Uh, the new airstrip uh, has now been completed and should receive, I think, approval from the local authorities in the uh, in the coming days. And we are also finalizing the uh, contract mining tender. So, uh, you know, all those elements are giving me, you know, strong confidence that uh, we will see a very strong second half. Um, if I look, you know, into uh, exploration, which is the other part uh, of uh, of our um, uh, of our business, uh, we've been investing a lot uh, in uh, in exploration. Uh, we have some pretty exciting results which are coming up, uh, building on the success of what we already announced at uh, at Hyundai with the uh, carry discoveries and the uh, uh, increased resources at uh, at Le Plac uh, for the uh, the ET mine. Uh, we're expecting to announce uh, next week uh, an updated resource for uh, Fetico, uh, which will be followed by a PA in in Q3 and then a PFS in, in Q1 2021. So, uh, you know, this Greenfield project in Côte d'Ivoire is shaping very nicely and uh, will be a, a strong contender to, uh, to be the next mine uh, we, might, uh, we might build. Um, as we said, you know, we want to focus in 20 and 21 in maximizing cash flow generation. And then by the end of 21, we will assess the different projects that we have in the portfolio so that we can decide which one should go first for construction in 2022. And last, I think we will be, uh, you know, coming up with the uh, maiden reserve estimate for uh, Carry West, Carry Center, and Carry Gap at, at Hyundai. So, uh, quite a lot of uh, news flow to come. Uh, with, uh, you know, uh, I think pretty, pretty good news going forward. And finally, Sebastian, with gold running close to two thousand dollars an ounce, which is at an all-time record high, I couldn't let you go without a question on where to next for gold. Some analysts are predicting three thousand dollars an ounce. Well, you know, uh, it's, I think, very difficult to predict the gold price. Uh, so uh, I probably won't take any, any bet on that. I would just say that, uh, you know, when you, when you look at the, uh, the environment, the economy, uh, the uh, government responses to uh, COVID-19, uh, you can see that uh, there's no reason why, you know, gold price shouldn't continue to, uh, uh, to have a strong, a strong run in the coming uh, months and, and probably years. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, a high gold price usually means uh, that uh, you know it's good for gold companies but it means also that the rest of the economy is probably suffering uh, which is not the best part of uh, you know of the uh, uh, of the environment uh, but uh, you know on, on our side I think we, we can't be distracted by the price uh, we need to be uh, to stay very focused on, on managing our cost uh, that's the thing that we can control we don't control the gold price but we control our cost and we need to focus on delivering you know our strategic objectives uh, especially uh, deleveraging as fast as possible the balance sheet and, uh, you know, soon initiating a, a dividend policy uh, as soon as, uh, you know, we'll be net cash positive. Well, Sebastian, thank you very much. Great to speak to you today and look forward to catching up again soon. Thank you very much, Rosie. It's been a pleasure.